quickly. In this quick change, I mean, uh, had this situation before, but is there a lot of tweaking to what you're going to do this weekend that you wouldn't have done? Uh, not really. I mean, we just have to address the strengths of Cardell and make sure we have uh, a good game plan that fits his strengths and then, uh, you know, bring along the package with Braxton Miller as a backup quarterback. Have you found that deep threat yet, Coach? Uh, we have certain guys that uh, have made some plays down the field, yeah. I mean, Curtis Samuel's caught some deep balls for us, which we think he's a threat, and uh, Jalen as well. So we feel like those two guys are definitely deep threats for us. How did Cardell respond last week after or after it was clear that JT was going to be the starter? He was uh, good, real good. He's a pro and uh, wants what's best for this team and uh, came to work every day, did his job at work, prepared himself, and he was ready to go when called upon. And so, uh, you know, feel like he's ready to do the same thing again this week. Bigger role, obviously, and step in and because uh, I think he's undefeated as a starter. Um, and Braxton's going to be the backup. Uh, how, yeah. Obviously, that would require him to throw some, I would assume. How, how has he done with that? Has he thrown much? What have you seen? Yeah, we'll have to see how that develops as we move through the week of practice. about uh, Braxton Ed. He's been working primarily at wide receiver, mm -hmm. uh, from what we understand. How hard of, do you anticipate or difficult that might be to just you know, move from one position to the other and then back and, and be ready to back up Cardale this week? Uh, well, we've had a package every week with Braxton at quarterback. So you've seen him out there running quarterback, and you've just seen a small sample size that we've used in the course of the recent games. But uh, there's much more that's available to us with him there. So uh, we'll just get more work at that and, and evolve that as much as we can so we're ready to go. Front row right, Austin. Ed, I don't know how easy it is to compare it, but when Cardell was pushed in this situation off the bench a year ago against Wisconsin, he had no starting experience. You guys said you were confident in him, mm -hmm. but you had to. there had to be some doubts about what he could give you. Now you guys know through, after 10 starts, is there a difference this week as opposed to that, that first one? What is it? Well, I think it's just uh, <clears throat> it's a combination of things. Like what uh, does Minnesota do on defense? What can Cardell do at a high level, which is a lot of things? And then uh, what can the rest of the team do as well? And then combine all those thoughts together and put together a nice package where we can win a football game. And so uh, it is nice to know, though, you know, that he has played and has had experiences, and I think, uh, you know, he'll be ready to go and play at a high level. As confident as you guys seemed in that week leading up to the Big Ten Championship game, was there any trepidation for the coaching staff about what was going to happen for Cardell's it's his first time out? Uh, not regarding Cardell. I mean, there's we have that every game. Coaches, I mean, that's the nature of being a coach. Is, uh, but as far as Cardell was concerned, he had a great week of practice. He prepared. What we asked him to do, we felt confident he could do. He showed that in practice. So, uh, And then he t went out on the field in the Wisconsin game and did exactly what we thought he would do and did it at a, at a high level. And so it was fun to see. Front row middle, Dave. How would you evaluate the play of the offensive line thus far, Ed? Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, uh, based on where we're at yards per carry, we're ahead of last year. I mean, we're ahead of last year in a lot of areas. So uh, I think the last four or five weeks, we've played extremely well. And ex these last couple games, so we're kind of hitting our stride. I think it takes a while for the O-line to do that. But uh, I'm really pleased with where we're at right now. So all good. Is there one particular area that you feel like you guys need to get better at the most? Um, no, I don't have a specific thing that. Uh, is my biggest concern, you know. I mean, the guys are showing up to work at practice. They play hard, they practice hard, and then they go out in the games. And uh, so I think uh, they've controlled the line of scrimmage th through the last four or five games pretty well. Second row left, Lori. Coach, uh, Urban had discussed 
adjustments and how things become more normal throughout the course of the season, how much more smoothly are the logistics of play calling and, and getting your offense to where you want to be going right now? Oh, I think it's uh, going much better. I mean, I think it's going real good, as a matter of fact, right now. So we're real pleased with that. I mean, the coordination of uh, a group of coaches, you know, adjusting in the games and uh, communicating well. And uh, so that part's gone well. And then, uh, you know, just as we've evolved offensively, because you have different pieces, different things going on. So, but uh, where we're at right now, I mean, I couldn't be happier with where we're at the last couple of games and the momentum we have. And so uh, we just have to keep moving forward. Do you feel like you have an answer as to what it'll take to make Cardell effective in the red zone? Because, I mean, before the answer was JT and you don't have any. Uh, yeah, we do. So we, we, ha we feel like uh, we have a good answer for the red zone right now. And we've kind of evolved into what we're going to do there. And uh, we know what he can do. I mean, he practices as part of that all through the last few weeks, even though JT's primarily done it. So uh, we'll, we'll use the things that play to his strengths. Third row left, Eric. If Cardell would potentially go down with injury or whatever else would happen. How confident are you guys in Braxton Miller as a passer? I mean, he's going to be your backup quarterback. He's had these shoulder surgeries. Where does he kind of stand with that? Yeah, he's completely healed, and he's medically able to go. So, uh, you know, behind the scenes, there's a lot of things he's been doing that nobody knows about. So, you know, we're confident that he'll do whatever he needs to do to help us win a game. Whatever we have to do to use Braxton Miller to win a game, he'll do it. And he's in here yesterday and today already many hours getting ready. So kid loves Ohio State football and is a team guy. So we're confident that when his number's called, he'll be ready. Front row left, Doug. And how does something like this affect how you view JT Barrett? Uh, a, he's a 20-year-old. 20-year-olds make mistakes. 20-year-olds uh, aren't perfect. He, uh, you know, did something that hurt himself and hurt our football team. But everybody gets a second chance in life, and uh, so we'll move forward. How do I view him? I, he has a, a lot of banked credibility on what he's done prior to that. Now he has to repair that credibility with the players and coaches, which he's in the process of doing that. And like you said, everybody gets a second chance. And, uh, you know, he'll earn that right to get that second chance. And um, we'll let that process play out. But, uh, you know, as far as he's a human being and he, he made a mistake, a grave mistake that uh, he regrets and we all regret and uh, put us in a tough situation. And we have to move forward from that. Do you think, I guess specifically with his teammates, how does a team react in something like this when you have a guy who's been acknowledged as a leader and one of the captains and is involved in something like this? I think time will tell there. I think uh, he has, uh, you know, a lot of teammates that trust and respect him. I think everybody, it was an eye opener that, uh, you know, he made a mistake and I think it, we'll see, you know how things move forward. I mean, I can't tell you right now, we haven't put the team on the field. We haven't had the team together to assess where we're at. But uh, I think that everybody here is business-like in that we want to win this football game and no obstacle, no speed bump, so to speak, is going to get in our way. And so every coach, every player has got to strap it up and here we go and do. A, we'll go a little bit harder, play a little bit better and not let what's behind us now affect what's in front of us. And uh, we're not going to let that, you know, happen. So we're preparing for, uh, you know, to go win a game with the players we have. And last question. Tim, front row. Yeah, uh, Ed, is it possible that uh, Cardale is the kind of guy that's better when called on in, for one of another term, emergency situations that, in fact, uh, as you look back on the way he responded last year in the postseason, et cetera, uh, is he the kind of guy that will – do you have the sense that he's the kind of guy that will step to the fore in a situation like this? Yeah, I do. I do have great confidence that he will 
just knowing him and knowing uh, how important this team is and uh, his desire to be successful and to help us be successful, I, I have great amount of confidence that he's going to prepare and play at extremely high level. And we're going to do everything we can to help him do that. So, uh, yeah, I'm not losing sleep at night that Cardell is going to go out there and start against Minnesota. I mean, I'm, I feel very confident in that. I, I, that was the other thing I was going to follow up. I mean, obviously, last year he was thrown into a tough spot going into the, uh, into the playoffs or going into the, uh, the championship game. Are there certain guys that do <laughs> – are better off in that kind of situation than being the regular guy, if you understand what I'm saying. Oh, I suppose there are. I mean, I suppose there are people that feel more comfortable in that role. Um, I don't think Cardell views himself as that. I think he views himself as a, a starter, and he prepares like that. And um, so I think that's a whole different story with him. But, I mean, there are – you know, basketball, tremendous six men, and then they become starters in basketball, and it's a whole different deal. But I think this is a whole different situation. But uh, I think he prepared really well uh, last week, and uh, I think he'll continue that. I mean, and his off-week preparation was great, too. So, I mean, he's – the last couple of weeks, he's gone out there, and, like, we watch practice, and you wouldn't know he's gone through what he's gone through. So – what did you see from Minnesota? What have you seen from Minnesota that concerns you uh, as an offensive coach going against their defense? Uh, what did you see, especially the other night? Uh, they had a chance to win and played a very physical game, uh, very aggressive against the run, played a lot of man coverage, uh, very sound, very well coached. Uh, so uh, they, they present an aggressive approach to defense with, a, like I said, some blitzing, but a very uh, heavy man coverage, and uh, just well coached, play hard, substitute some guys through there, rotate some defensive linemen, just try to stay fresh, and uh, just keep coming at you. And I think they'll have a great deal of confidence in themselves, and they'll come in here and give us their A game. You guys had a nice rhythm going with JT at quarterback. You got the option going again a little bit and stuff like this. Do you step back from that now again and? Uh, kind of go to what you, you guys were using Cardale with for the first uh, we'll, few games? You know, we'll evolve to what we think, you know, and move in the direction that suits Cardale the best, but we won't abandon everything we're doing, though. No.